We've talked about the government's role in redistribution, combating externalities, and providing public goods. But in fact, in today's modern economy, the single largest role of the government is in providing social insurance. These are programs designed to help insure individuals against a variety of risks they face in the world. Last lecture, we saw that individuals like to insure themselves against risk. And sure enough, private insurance is big business in the US. Individuals spend over $1.5 trillion per year on private insurance. Yet there's reason to believe that private insurance underinsures individuals for the risks they face in society. The reason for this underinsurance on the part of private insurers is a type of market failure known as information asymmetry, whereby the information available to the sellers in a market is different than that available to the purchasers. If this is the case, it can lead to transactions that would make both parties better off not happening. The intuition of this type of market failure is best illustrated using an example cited by Nobel Prize winning economist George Akerlof in 1970, the market for used cars. In the used car market, buyers and sellers have different information. The seller of a used car knows if the car has been in an accident. He knows if the car has any problems and how well the car has been maintained over the years. But potential buyers may not have any of this information. In fact, maybe the seller is selling the car because he knows it's a lemon, a car that has major defects that are easy for the seller to hide. Potential buyers don't know whether the car is a lemon, and they can't necessarily trust the information provided by the seller. So buyers might avoid the used car market altogether. For example, let's say you're willing to spend $6,000 on a car that's dependable. Well, in that case, you're in luck. I have a 10-year-old car that I've kept in pristine shape and I'm willing to sell you the car for only $5,000. This is a transaction that would increase total welfare. You're willing to pay $6,000, but I'm only asking for $5,000. So this trade should happen. The problem is that you don't know if the car really is in pristine shape. All you know is that most 10-year-old cars have a variety of problems that could cost $2,000 to fix before the car is dependable. That might mean that you're only willing to spend $4,000 not $6,000 on the used car, since you worry you'll need to invest another $2,000 to fix the car once you have it. And even though I promise you that my car is in great shape, you have no way to verify this, so you assume I'm lying. You don't buy the car for $5,000. This is a market failure. I know that my car is in pristine condition, but I have no way of getting you to believe me. We have different or asymmetric information. As a result, a transaction that would have made both of us better off doesn't happen. In insurance markets, the information asymmetry is reversed. Buyers of the insurance know more than the sellers. Individuals buying insurance tend to know more than the insurance companies about how healthy they are and how risky their lifestyle might be. If you're an insurance company, you're responsible for paying the medical bills of the people you insure. As a result, you'd rather insure healthy, cautious people since they won't get sick or hurt as much and won't be as costly for you to cover. You'd like to avoid sick or riskier people who tend to require more frequent and more expensive care, just as the used car buyer wanted to avoid the lemon that would cost more to fix up. But it's exactly these sick or riskier individuals who want health insurance. Healthier people know they're healthy and may decide insurance is not worth it for them. And just like the worry of buying a lemon kept the potential used car buyer from actually making the purchase, the worry of insuring a risky individual might keep companies from offering insurance in the first place. So what happens? Insurance doesn't get offered at a fair price. Sometimes it doesn't even get offered at all. Insurers are only willing to offer insurance at a price so high that many people won't buy it, even though these people would have bought it at a fair price. So many people end up uninsured against risks. People want insurance at a fair price. Insurers would like to sell insurance at a fair price, plus a small profit, but they don't have enough information to know whether an individual is a good risk or a bad risk. So the insurers play it safe and overcharge for the insurance, meaning many people choose not to get insured. This is a market failure. Note that a market failure doesn't necessarily mean a collapse of the entire market. In fact, there are clear market failures in the private health insurance industry in the US but that industry still brings in nearly one trillion in revenue annually. Market failure in this case doesn't mean market collapse. 
it means that within the market, there's deadweight loss from transactions that would have made both parties better off, but that are not happening. In the case of health insurance, we think there are many of these transactions not happening. That's why until a few years ago, there were 50 million uninsured Americans. As a result of these market failures, governments in many countries, including the US, intervene in insurance markets through the provision of social insurance. We'll discuss this more in the application videos that follow.